Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. This is the first video of this two video series. In this video series, initially we will start with Active Directory domain services on Windows Server 2022. And then we will also cover Microsoft Entra ID which is a cloud-based directory service created by Microsoft for Azure. Later on, we will integrate on-prem Active Directory with Microsoft Entra ID to create a hybrid infrastructure. I want to cover basics to advanced topics in this video series. This series of videos will assist you in preparing for Microsoft Exam AZ-800 which is about administering Windows Server Hybrid Core Infrastructure. Let me tell you first that this video is going to be more theoretical. The introduction of Active Directory Domain Services on Windows Server 2022 will be the focus of this video. According to Microsoft, a directory is a hierarchical structure that stores information about objects on the network. Active Directory Domain Services is Microsoft's proprietary directory service. We generally used Active Directory for identity and access management. So we can say Active Directory is an identity management database that allows IT teams to define what users can do on a network. Active Directory uses a structured data store as the basics for the logical hierarchical organization of directory information. This data store contains information about active directory objects. An object can be single resource element like a user, group, application or device. Each object has associated attributes that allow it to be distinguished from other entities. For example, a user object would have a username, password and email attributes that distinguish it from other objects. Security is integrated with Active Directory through login authentication and access control to objects in the directory. With a single network logon, administrators can manage directory data and organization throughout the network and authorized network users can access resources anywhere on the network. ADDS is a directory service that enables you to create organizational divisions called domains. ADDS includes both logical and physical components. A domain is a logical container of network components hosted by at least one server designated as a domain controller. The domain controllers for each domain replicate the data among themselves for fault tolerance and load balancing purposes. I'll create a separate video on logical and physical components of Active Directory. Let's discuss the Active Directory functions. As we now know that one of the function of Active Directory is to making services and resources available. As I have mentioned earlier, that now we use Active Directory for identity and access management. So the primary functions of Active Directory domain services are to provide authentication and authorization services for hardware and software resources on the network. Simply put, authentication is the process of verifying a user's identity and authorization is the process of granting users access only to the resources they are permitted to use. Users joined to an ADDS domain can log on to the domain as opposed to an individual computer or application and can access any resources in that domain for which administrators have granted them the proper permissions. Without ADDS, users must have separate accounts on every computer they access, which results in problems creating and maintaining the accounts, synchronizing passwords, 
and performing multiple logons. After the authentication process is completed successfully, an Active Directory authorization process occurs whenever the user attempts to access a network resource. Network administrators grant users access to resources by assigning them permissions using their Active Directory user objects. No transactions between clients and protected resources involve a transaction using a domain controller as a third party. The design of an ADDS infrastructure therefore calls for the distribution of domain controllers around the network so that all clients have ready access to them. I believe that seeing these things in action is the most effective way to understand them. For this demo, we have one Windows Server 2022 VM which is a domain controller for msaptivewebcast.com domain. I have already deployed new Active Directory Forest on this Windows Server 2022. We also have one Windows 10 VM and one Windows 11 VM. Click on Tools and select Active Directory Users and Computers. I have created one domain user named Semcook. Open File Explorer. Double-click on C drive. A shared folder has been created on this server and Sam Cook has been given full control permission. Let's go to our Windows 10 VM. This Windows 10 computer is joined to our Active Directory domain. Let's sign into this computer using Sam Cook's username and password. Let's enter user's password and press Enter key to log in. When a domain user logs in to a client computer, the logon client sends a request to the Active Directory KDC authentication service for a Kerberos ticket granting ticket. The request includes details like the user's username and the date and time. All information except the username is encrypted using the hash of the user's password. The request carries encrypted material that allows the KDC to authenticate the request. Remember, the keying material used to generate and verify the request is derived from the user's password. The KDC authentication service uses the username to look up its copy of the user's password hash and uses it to decrypt the rest of the request. If the decryption is successful, that means the client used the correct password hash and the user has successfully authenticated. Once the user is authenticated, KDC Authentication Service sends the user's client a ticket granting ticket. The TGT includes a unique session key and a timestamp that specifies how long that session is valid, which is normally 8 to 10 hours. Importantly, therefore, sending the TGT the KDC encrypts it using the password hash for a special account, the KRB TGT account. That password hash is shared among the all domain controllers in the Active Directory domain so that they can read the TGTs they receive as users request access to various IT resources. Whenever the user needs access to an IT resources, the client machine sends the request to the KDC ticket granting service, including the TGT, to prove that user has been recently authenticated. Let's see it in action. Already, a user is logged in successfully on this machine, so we are assuming that this client machine has our user's token to verify his identity. Let's access the shared folder which we have created on Windows Server 2022. Open Run menu, type double slash ws2022-dc01. Here, ws2022-dc01 is the host name of our Windows Server 2022 domain controller. Here, we can see the folders which are shared on our Windows Server 2022. Did you notice anything else? It didn't ask for the username and password for authentication process. As the domain user is already authenticated and has a Kerberos token, 
So it won't ask for the authentication again. This is known as a SSO, single sign-on. You just have to authenticate to once. Open Run menu and type lusrmgr.msc and press Enter key to open Local User and Group Manager. Click on Users and check do we have any user account with the name Sam Cook? The answer will be no as we don't have any local user account with that name on this computer. So we can confirm that we have used domain user to sign in. Let's go to our Windows 11 VM which is in workgroup. Remember, this Windows 11 computer is not part of our Active Directory domain. So here we have the local admin account. Let's click on sign in to sign in locally. We have logged in successfully on this Windows 11 computer using the local user account. Let's access the shared folder which we have created on Windows Server 2022. Open Run menu, type UNC path WS 2022-DC01. Here WS 2022-DC01 is the host name of our Windows Server 2022 domain controller. Press Enter key to access shared folders. This time, it is asking for the username and password for authentication as we have used local user account to sign in. As a user is not authenticated in Active Directory nor he has a Kerberos token on this machine. So, single sign-on will not work and user will be asked for authentication if you want to access the shared folder. So we have seen how identity and access management works in Active Directory and what is authentication and authorization. And that's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.